Well, uh, do you do you remember when we was uh, when we went for food, and then the next day you Facetime me? I think I answer Facetime, and he goes, "Bro, I'm in Spain." <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Because we played Manchester United in the Champions League, right? And uh, for me, winning the Man of the Match trophy that game in Old Trafford, obviously uh, one of the biggest stadiums. Yeah, that was a but big one for me, man. But you uh, first of all, for me, is the Dean. Uh, without Allah, I wouldn't have anything, and uh, everything I own is through Him only. That's when I got a little chat with him as well, and he's, uh, he just looked to me and said, very good game, man, keep going. And it's just stuff like that. You know the small things yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that make a big impact? Like, uh, the, when, when the news broke to every one of us. Um, this week's episode of the podcast is with footballer Arnout Danjuma. If you're new here, we're just a bunch of ordinary Muslims trying to navigate through business, life, relationships, etc. And we make these podcasts because we want to showcase successful people that you can relate to. And sometimes we just end up having a bit of a chin wag and a natter. This week's episode is a special one because it's Arnout's third episode with us. And it's probably the most interesting in the sense that over the past year or over the past like nine or 10 months, Arnout's profile has completely shot up. Being in the Champions League, having one of the most amazing Champions League uh, runs and performing immaculately for his club, for his new club in La Liga. So many more people are speaking about this new young prospect that's potentially going to take over the footballing world. So this interview, as much as I know you guys love uh, when we speak to Arnout and people like Arnout uh, about things like their general day-to-day -day life, uh, a, a big portion of it is about those kind of football questions, what life has been like now on kind of a new, bigger world stage. But of course, uh, we do dabble in some conversation that is kind of more kind of faith-based or just personality based so uh hopefully it's a a nice mix for everybody before we get into it Eid is just around the corner and so we have put our conversation cards freshly guarded the game uh on sale for 25 percent off if you use the code Eid 25 i believe we could never have imagined how successful these cards would have been and um we put them out at a time where conversation felt so important and I think like two years later, which is now, you guys are still sending us the most amazing stories that you're connecting with parents, your siblings, uh, people you've had rifts with, uh, your, your wives and husbands. Uh, and that's really fulfilling to hear. Uh, so if you want to have a powerful conversation with loved ones, uh, we've put out a set of 100 conversation cards that are kind of, some are relaxed and jokey, others are deep, others are faith inspired. Uh, there's a good mix in there uh, and I'm sure you guys will love it. You can grab those at shop.freshlyuganda.com and don't forget to use the code E25 for 25% off. Now, I hope you guys enjoy this epic podcast with one of uh, the most inspiring individuals that I have had the pleasure to know, Arnout Danjuma. Enjoy. And welcome to a freshly grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Well, welcome to freshly grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said welcome to freshly grounded. After that bit. Created by... And after that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Okay, so we're joined Assalamu by... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're joined by... Ana Danjuma, that's it. The Champions League... <laughs> the Champions League master. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, very, very strong season. Alhamdulillah, we're joined back with... Alhamdulillah. The, the Scrap that. That's how your intro goes <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap that. We're Scrap joined that. by our best friend on Freshly Guarded. Scrap that. Oh, no, down, Juma. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, sir? Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. I'm fine, man. How are you, brother? Yeah, good, man. Alhamdulillah. It's nice to have you back for a third time. It's been time. a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, you've done, you've done an episode from home. Hmm. You've done an episode from our old studio, and now you've done an episode in our new studio. I've been everywhere. Thank you so much. Nah, man. I thank you. I thank you for everything, isn't it? You've got to move your coffee cart. Oh, is it taking me out? <laughs> oh. I'll go with the mug. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we're joined by uh, 
at uh, Arn Out, and we've also got Cairo on Productions. Cairo, Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. How are you guys doing? Yeah, good. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm the producer today. That's it. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. We haven't got a camera on you, unfortunately, today. You look, you're shining, bro. You're shining. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you got to let him know, innit? Yeah, man. You're looking good, man. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, basically, uh, uh, Arn Out and I just came back from shooting. And I just want to give you the lowdown, okay? So, uh, this is the first time you've done shooting as well? Yeah, first time. First, first time, first time. First time you've done shooting, first mm-hmm. time I've done shooting. And also, uh, what an experience. Amazing, isn't it? It was fun. We shot a... Uh, we shot a... Two hand rifles. Yeah. And... Uh, a machine gun and a, machi- a sniper. A semi-automatic machine gun. Go on and then, be honest to the viewers as well, what happened? So be then, honest. All right, so we started. And <laughs> first, of all, we started. Yes. First, of all, we started with the handgun. Yeah, <laughs> that should be said. And then, go on with the handgun. Mm-hmm. I was amazing. <laughs> MashaAllah. The first time ever using a gun, I should say, and it was in a shooting range, a licensed. Explain s- amazing though. What is amazing, range. bro? It's, I was so good. So we've got the charter thing. No, 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 no with the handguns, I was so good that uh, when my uh, piece of paper came forward, yeah, when my piece of paper came forward, where they got the targets, like where, where, where you're shooting the targets, yeah, just, uh, at that point, uh, Adam came and, uh, Arnold came and took a picture of my uh, piece of paper and he put it on his Instagram story. Is that correct or, is that correct or, is that right or wrong? I can't deny that, but... I'd yeah, like it. I'd like it to continue go. the story as well. What happened afterwards? Go on. Okay, so after, so just so we, that's we, one. That's one yeah. out of four guns, right? But we've just got conf- confirmation that he took a picture of my <laughs> my target and put it on his story, and uh, that's out there. So social media is a liar. Everyone. Social media is fake anyway. Social media is a fake. And uh, all right, then obviously we moved on to the bigger guns, and I'll, I'm happy to admit that with the bigger guns, yeah, Arnold was probably stronger with the bigger guns. The bigger yes, guns, yeah, sniper, yeah. machine guns. The, so we had the semi automatic sec- rifle, sec- second Glock as well. Yeah, the semi-automatic Glock. Which one was that? No, said the last he said one, the black a, one. No, he said that There's the a, a semi-automatic rifle was a Glock rifle or something. Yeah, but I'm talking about the Glocks. We had two Glocks, right? There's yeah. one with a laser. Yeah. And there's one Glock where you were... Is that what it's called? Glock? Yeah, it's what, like, that's bro, what it was. Bro, it was so powerful. You should hang on. Man. Bro, it's the first time you're, you're shooting yeah, it, it's like... Well, it's a bit scary, man. Really? It's the first time I've done shooting like that, right? And uh, the kickback, was yeah, it? the kickback. What's it called? There's a different term for it, right? The oh, recoil. S- the recoil is yeah. so big they actually for you realize how yeah you realize how powerful the guns are, man. Oh, really? it's scary. It's a scary thing, man. Did you guys shoot a um, shotgun? Uh, no. No, we, there was there was a shotgun available, I think. No, What's no, there wasn't. No, there wasn't. There wasn't so. a shotgun. That was when then you flying back. Yeah, no, no. We were yeah, there, I heard about a shotgun that's like literally just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're flying. Yeah, man. You need to. Get, yeah, get, go to the gym to shoot a shotgun first. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but. Oh, oh. <laughs> with, bro, with the sniper, I know, especially, bro. The accuracy was. was bro, the, with a sniper, bro. He I was, appreciate your honesty. He was like, bang, was like, pinpoint. Like, he's like, he used to it, actually. Like, and then pinpoint, he just. The, bang, the, bang, when bang, when, bang, they, when, they use, when you use a sniper, they put the target right at the back. Okay. Bro. <laughs> the sniper sounds. The clock sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> like that, yeah? The sniper is like, tick, like that. That's what it sounds like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, they brought the paper forward. He hit the target bang in the middle, bro, every time. Was it a real bullets? Or was that pellet no, guns? No, real bullets. Bro, serious. <laughs> yeah? Come on, man. He yeah. was like, probably his bullets are sick, man. It was sick, man. To be so. fair, I found a sniper a lot easier than a Glock, man. But you found a Glock easier than a sniper, didn't, didn't you? Um, yeah. Yeah. I find that weird, man. The Glock's like... The kickback is so much, and the sniper is just straight, like easy to hit the target. Do you think there's any relation? Because uh, we were joking about it, but do mm. you think there's any relation to the accuracy that you have with your feet, uh, meaning, uh, <laughs> and then the accuracy you have with your hand? No, but uh, serious though, because it, it can accuracy be like a all-encompassing uh, attribute that you have? Do you think any of it had to play? Uh, like, do you think they had a part playing anything? I think so. Uh, you know that it's, it's funny because a friend of mine men, uh, mentioned something to me a couple of days ago, which is funny. He said. He's from Holland, right? And obviously, there are a lot of football players that he recognized. He said, whenever I'm, because we've got a tiny country, like 17 million people, right? So everyone that's into football uh, from Holland, everyone knows them, right? So he says, whenever he stops near a stopping light, near a traffic light next to a footballer, he says, they're always, they're always um, like 
quicker and accelerating than he is. Could that no? Mm. So it's got. It's could got, that be uh, because footballers probably have some half decent cars <laughs> on them? <laughs> no, no. But the, it's funny because I think it's. I think it might be related. There's like a lot of things you do off the pitch. Uh, naturally, because you do them on the pitch, you just like accelerate quickly. You take decisions quick. Uh, maybe with the accuracy thing. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm. I'm not really good with my hands anyway. I'm not really good in playing basketball or any hand-eye coordinated sport. But like my feet are, tend to be a bit better, man. Are there any sports that you've noticed a uh, kind of um, like a fusion with or like similarities in regards to the the training that's like off the court or off the pitch? Yeah, you tend to like I tend to Alhamdulillah, I tend to pick up on any sport quite natural. Uh, uh, so cricket, try to uh, we we did we did a cricket session uh, at Bournemouth uh, just for fun and just because. You play football. I'm not sure if every footballer has. Maybe it's just just a thing that I have. Like I've, I've I've always done a lot of sport whenever I was young. So I just generally tend to catch up quick to any sport. To be fair, tennis. Play a lot of tennis. Really? Uh, yeah, man. And how? So last time you was on Pressure Grounded, I think you were in the UK still. Now you're in Spain. When was it? Yeah, because that uh, was that was um, in the studio. Yeah, so still in the UK. You were still in the UK, right? Yeah. I think you travelled down from Bournemouth that time. Yeah. So how has it been now? Like, uh, just generally speaking, how has Spain been? Do you like Spain and stuff like that? Alhamdulillah, man. In terms really of like the weather and all Yeah, that no, stuff. I've really liked Spain, man, so far. Uh, it's a nice country to live, man. Uh, the sun obviously brings a lot of uh, enjoyment as well. Uh, the food is unbelievable. Like, yeah. fruit-wise, everything's unbelievable. So living in Spain, generally, it's, it's a privilege, man. Is, the, a sun, privilege, is man. the sun similar to, like, here in Dubai? No, it's different, man. Really? In Dubai, it's like um, in Spain, it's not as what's the term uh, humid. Yeah. The the humidity is not it's not as much as here, man. Like when the sun hits you here, like it hits you. Yeah. And it's just ho- it's just hot. So it's like dry heat. Yeah. It's it? like dry, man. It's like proper dry. But in Spain, it's 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 just like you enjoy the sun. It doesn't like it. It's weird. Like the temperature can be the same, but it's not as hot. It's a much enjoyable. Can you feel. go out like during the day? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. You man. can't we really do that? Yeah. Like, no, you, you can't. Much. You can't, can't kind of stay in AC. <laughs> you yeah. gotta stay in AC. Over here, you're stuck at home until like Maghrib. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, to be fair, there's a lot to do here, AC. Yeah, but how's it for you then? Like, so you basically live at night here, evenings and nights. Do you know what's it. interesting? Because I sleep so it? early, so yeah, I basically yeah. don't live at all. Because I, I sleep <laughs> like nine thirty p.m. or ten o'clock. Well, you but can't live here then. No, I can. Because no, the good can't. thing about here is that everywhere has AC. I saw a post. I don't know if it was on I Love in Dubai or where it was, but it was someone saying that. Um, You'd rather be in a hot country mm. in Dubai than in a, like, you'd rather be in Dubai in the summer than in like Europe in the summer because in uh, Europe it's still hot in the summer, but in Dubai everywhere has AC. Okay. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, like, my mum was saying the same, like, yeah. it's hot, but there's no AC, so they're exactly. just like fanning themselves to cool down. So like there's, there's benefits, bro. Like first of all, everywhere you go has AC. So really, it's just like the small moments that like you're going from the car to the door, or you're going from the house to the car, or like you're going from the car park to the, you know what I mean? Like so there's very small windows of time, so you can still experience loads of things that are indoor. Okay, in the UK, when when did you really do anything outdoor? Mm. Like during the day, anyway. Really, do you know so what I mean? Even f- for me, it's different because when I I lived in Bournemouth, obviously two years, and I used to do loads outside. Yeah, fair. But. I but guess, also, you're probably training guess, and stuff. Yeah, but I guess at Bournemouth, you, you, you have the beach and, and you've, you've got... Yeah. Uh, it must be to do with that lifestyle. It's just different, isn't it, then? Yeah. yeah different. At Bournemouth, I used to be outside as well, even in England. I, 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 maybe it's just me, but I just like being outside. So I'm like a home, outside. but I'm a home... Uh, I'm like... Uh, you just like to be at home? Yeah, it's like... Home you can tell by my posture, by my back. I'm this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? Just give me a laptop and some Wi-Fi. I'm good, bro. So <laughs> I think we need a laptop or yeah. Wi-Fi. Huh? Laptop Wi Fi, that's it. Yeah, laptop Wi Fi is all I need. <laughs> Whereas Arna, I'll probably like, give him like a ball and he's good, bro. Like, nah, I need to really do something, man. Really? Even, yeah, you even, always have even, to be busy. Yeah, 100%. Man. Even during the holiday now, I can't sit still. Really? Yeah, I need to do something, man. Like, the f- it's funny because after a long season of football, you generally, like, you're exhausted, right? Because a full season is not easy. And then after the season, you're looking forward to a bit of uh, downtime, right? But then after a week, my body just starts itching. Like, I need to do something. Now I was quickly like, I'll start going outside, do bits, start to run, start to do this, start to do that. And then after two weeks maximum, just playing football and popping a ball every day again. It's just, I, I can't. was going to say, how do you keep yourself fit when you're on holidays and stuff? Uh, you, nah, that's easy, man. You've got, um, obviously the club gives you um, their own schedule of what they want you to do. 
But to be really honest with you, besides that, I just do a lot myself as well, just because I like activities anyway. So doing, obviously doing, doing, doing off season, uh, it's my time to enjoy myself a bit more. So I'll travel a lot, uh, play a lot of football, see my friends. We play football anyway, always. Uh, play tennis, we play different sports. Uh, so I'm, I'm generally always busy anyway. When you go back to uh, like training and playing matches and stuff after the summer break, is it always? Can you always feel the difference because you haven't played pro- like competitively in like two um, three months or not really? The difference in terms of a bit rusty, yeah, but physical, not really, man. And to be fair, doing an off season, if you if you just stay a bit busy, you won't lose a lot of your physicality, man. It's because think about it, like you're busy for more than eleven months. Like if you don't do any, if you if you chill for two weeks, it's not going, going to. Uh, decrease your your physical uh, physical ability back to zero, man. At least that's that's how I find it. I've never I've never find it difficult to get back into getting fit again. No. Alhamdulillah. Well, uh, do you do you remember when we was uh, when we went for food after the podcast? So it was like it was in the summer last summer, I think. Just we went to food. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah. We went out for dinner in London. You remember that when we did that? Yeah. Last time we went in London, out for food. Yeah, and then a- afterwards we a- went... And where? For the... Um, afterwards we went to that... What's that place called? Where we had the cupcakes. Cupcakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah then, then, day, then, right? and then we yeah. ended up bumping into my mum. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So do you remember what happened? Because that, that day, then, we, uh, then I think you dropped me home or something. And then the next day you FaceTimed me, I think... I think it was the next day, or like two days, within 48 hours, he FaceTimed me, bro. I answer FaceTime, and he goes, bro, I'm in Spain. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> bro, he was like, bro, he was like, bro I'm, I have to be really quick because I'm like, it's awesome. like it was very ah, quickly after yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I think it was yeah, like 48 yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next time he spoke. Yeah, something like that. I was asking the FaceTime, and you went, Bro, I can't explain. He's like, he's like, bro, I can't explain. But I got to be really, I got to be really quick. I got loads of food, uh, food comments. In, but basically, I just wanted to let you know that I've, I'm, I'm in, I'm in Spain, so I'm not gonna see you properly. Something like that. Like, I, just, I won't say why properly. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, you, you returned me the favor as well. You just gave me a call. Uh, was it like two days before you moved to Dubai? You're like, oh, I'm going to Dubai. Bang, you were gone. Did I? Yeah, instantly, man. <laughs> yeah. My man just left. Like this. that's what it felt like. Off an eye. Yeah, oh, to, to everyone watching, I think that's what it would have felt like. Yeah. But on his side of things, it must have been like... Yeah, it was a big decision. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what it felt like, though. But for like, you, it was like that. But that's what that's life of football, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... How, 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 does it, how does it work for you, though? Is it, is, does a club sort everything out for you, or you got to do everything? Um, generally speaking, a club, they really help you um, with the first move. So if you make a move or you get a transfer, then obviously uh, the first couple of weeks or months or however, however, how, 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 how long it will take... You'll be placed in a hotel. Uh, they help you uh, get used to the environment, help you to get used to the new clubs, the teammates, everything. Uh, so the clubs, to be fair, speaking on my behalf, moving to Spain was, be, was made quite easy for me because Villarreal, they've really helped me settle uh, in easily, man. They really helped me, man. Really grateful for that as well. Um, because not always that easy, is it, moving uh, to a different country. But generally speaking, the club, they really help you. And then afterwards, obviously, when you settle and you find your place, you, 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 you find your own way. Okay, okay. Now, I think there's no denying that in the past year, your oh. profile has gone, like, just shot up. I, yeah. I don't think there's any denying it because of the stats, because of the gameplay, because of, like... And, like, you just see everyone talking about you, bro. Like, when, when you're watching normal games and me as just a viewer of football and I'm watching the pundits speak on ITV and Sky Sports and this, that, the other, and then now you're hearing your name so regularly... It's a lot different to like even a year ago. Have you noticed that effect in and around your life as well? That like in the past year, your your profiles have shot up a lot, like kind of like drastically. Um, I was just speaking about that to you, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we were just talking about that. He was just talking about that. Uh, like obviously you get recognized more uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, generally speaking, you'll notice it, but on the contrary of it though, um, it feels like a duty towards me to always like treat the people in the best way possible, even though, and it might be uh, a bit disturbing, obviously, if you're having dinner with your family or stuff like that. But to be fair, when I was young, I did the same thing, isn't it? When I was a kid and I saw uh, someone I look up to, I'll be the rudest kid ever. So now me being uh, put in a position where I'm 
the hero that they look up to, you just need to make sure they treat them in the best way possible as well. So I feel like I owe, owe everyone that comes up to me and, and snides to me and wants a picture or autograph or someone, even just a general have a chat or something. I always try to uh, give them the best of myself during the time that I can give it. I, I, I've only ever seen you be so <laughs> kind and pleasant to anybody that's ever come up to you. And I, honestly, I commend you on that. I think um, one thing I've noticed I get a lot of messages because people, I suppose, have seen that you were on Freshly Grounded and stuff like that. And one thing I've noticed massively is that you're a huge inspiration to the Muslim community. And I don't think you can deep how much of an inspiration you are to them. Because I think in a world now where it feels sometimes really tough, like identifying as a, like a practicing Muslim, to have someone who you can see who's like so not shy to just... Um, uh, like att uh, attribute all of his success to Allah, to speak about Allah so often. Like you, you just go look at your Instagram feed and just see. Like uh, the other day, I think like there was a few people speaking because you're one of the posts on your Instagram feed. You 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 ended up turning up at like a mosque for like a class, and <clears throat> people were saying like this guy is on his break. He could be anywhere, and he's like going to the class within the community and like. Everyone in that community was so happy that you were there. Do you feel that responsibility on the Muslims? Is it just you living your life and it just happens to be like a, a byproduct of it? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's a bit of both. Um, I generally enjoy it. Uh, I generally enjoy, obviously, um, helping the youth and helping um, especially the brothers out that, that look up to me and stuff. Uh, because I used to be in that position when I was younger. So I kind of know what they're hinting towards, what they're feeling, what they want when they look to me. So I try to uh, give them in the best way possible, obviously. And I generally enjoy it. If I wouldn't enjoy it, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, but it also, I, I always say, you've got a responsibility as well. Um, that doesn't only go for me because I'm a football player or because I'm Muslim or because I'm this one, because I'm that. I think, generally speaking, anyone on this earth with a big profile, you've got a responsibility as well towards uh, the next generation, towards the kids that look up to you, towards the people that help you out in your career. You've got a responsibility uh, towards your friends, your family members, anyone involved. So um, it's a bit of both with me. Um, but alhamdulillah, I really enjoyed that, I mean, especially that um, I was invited by a uh, beloved brother of ours, Sheikh obviously, uh, Abdul Ahad. Uh, and obviously, I can't deny that, man. That was a, it was a privilege for me to be there and, and even be able to speak there. So. I enjoy it, but I generally see it as a responsibility as well, especially if you've got a big profile. Um, did, did you have a Muslim role model <coughs> in sports growing up? Uh, yeah, Muhammad Ali, but it's not a football player, is it? No, but in sports in general. Uh, in sports in general, yeah, Muhammad Ali is a big one. Um, always look up to him. Um, but not really, man. Not really, not really, not really. Because uh, he was kind, he was like almost past our time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah. you you were like... Your kind of parents and uncles and aunties tell you stories yeah, about Muhammad Ali. Yeah, but you don't Ali. really live his... We wasn't there in his prime. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Prince Nassim, like in, when I was younger, being like a big like... Do you yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember Prince Nassim. Do you, do you remember Prince Nassim? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, he was like, well, I remember like... For he was, us it was different, yeah, wasn't it? flip over ropes. Yeah, like, yeah. It was really entertaining. But I met him in Westfield like a, about a year ago or yeah, two years ago. totally different now, isn't it? Yeah, but he just still jokes. Like, he's so humble, bro. He's like, I asked him for a picture. I was like, nice, can I get a picture? He's like, yeah, bro, like, take a picture. And you just mad chill, bro, man. Like, he seems like one of those guys who's got a really kind heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, man. Yeah, he was really cool. But he, he, was, cool. Was, he, was, he was like, he was Pakistani, right? He was actually Yemeni. Was he Yemeni? Yeah, he's Yemeni. Okay, well, I, I believe like, I thought he was Pakistani as well. I think a lot of people. I mean, that's why a lot of us got excited as well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like how everyone loves Amir Khan. Yeah, I think that, yeah. But Prince Asim was like in a different era, like comedy. Yeah. But then he was actually doing well. Yeah. I don't know what he's up to now. But yeah, I think he does punditry and stuff now. Yeah. Punditry. But then who are the other like big Muslim sports personalities? You got Muhammad Ali, Prince Asim. You got Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. At, like in his prime when he was like. Uh, but have you seen recently uh, Jervon? Javonte yeah, Davis yeah, is that yeah, his name? Yeah. I don't know what Have his name you seen is, this, this um, boxer? No. He's like just become world champion, and I think he just I think he just converted to Islam yeah, like recently. Just before that fight. Oh, is he? Yeah. So, bro, this guy he just became world champion, young uh, boxer. Mashallah. And uh, he won the world championship, and when they interviewed him, he was like, uh, "I just want to start by saying Allah, yeah, yeah. Allah, <laughs> Alhamdulillah." Yeah, 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 it was amazing it, to see. I'll find it. Um, let me see. Yeah, that was that was powerful. But, but do you know what? It's not, I think like for any community, right? 
and we are always talking about the Muslim community. Um, or is, I just got the notification it's breaking news. Saudi Oman that, has completed his move to Bayern. Um, yeah, mashallah. Unbelievable player, man. Saudi Oman, yeah. Oh, you got to be on a pitch with him, right? Yeah, unbelievable player. Is it? Yeah, Saudi Oman is unbelievable. Man. Really? Yeah, what a player, man. <laughs> really? Yeah, man. Yeah. How much do you get in track with like Ronaldo, Saudi <laughs> Omani, Mo Salah? You played with all those guys last season, but you're on the opposite side to them, I guess, because you're playing kind of the same position as them. So how much do you get to kind of rub shoulders with them and see how um, they play and kind of see their football? Unfortunately, uh, this season with our Champions League round, we are the second leg, I was injured. And even the first leg, I was of injured, course. but I, I, I still play the game. Um, so I didn't really get a lot of interaction with um, the majority of the players but you can always kind of tell isn't it like um, I don't know there's always a, a stigma I think with maybe a lot of football players but generally speaking man, <laughs> the majority of them is always nice kind uh, what's, it, what's it like when you're like playing against um, Ronaldo like when you're on the pitch is it uh, like I mean, that was a bit different for me obviously for me that was uh, that was a big achievement uh, because we played Manchester United in the Champions League right and uh, for me winning the men of the match trophy that game in the Old Trafford obviously uh, one of the biggest stadiums uh, in the world playing against Cristiano Ronaldo who's a childhood hero of mine I've always looked up to him and even today I still study what he does so I can benefit from it as well uh, yeah that was a but big one feel, for me man but do you feel like nervous when you're on the pitch playing against him or do you um, feel like I gotta show him I'm, I'm sick I'm kind of a weird guy man to be honest man I just I'm nervous be, like going up to the game I get nervous but the closer I get to the pitch the stronger I feel and once the game starts mm. I'm just like like yeah, but you're, uh, you're professional. We, we, we spoke about this before. I think, I don't know if it was on mic or off mic, but we had a conversation before because I kind of asked you this question and you kind of told me and explained that once you're on the pitch, it's basically professional only. Like you have to put anything aside. You've got to yeah. forget about the kid that grew up like admiring yeah, you have football. To, like, you, you should have be to. professional. Yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. it on the pitch because that's, yeah, yeah, of course. You have to, you have to, you have to. You can't, you, you can't uh, feel any sorrow towards yeah. uh, your opponent, is it? Because you're there to win. Yeah. No, no, you can see that, man. You can see that. You can see that in your pace. All right, we're gonna go into the Champions League. You just mentioned Champions League, so I want to go into that with you. Before we do, uh, we've got. Uh, we normally have a co-host here on Fresh Guarded in these Dubai episodes, and his name is Kaya. So I said to Kaya, we got Dan Juma coming on the podcast, mm. and he's like, "Oh man, like, because he's in the UK right now. He's like visiting right for Eid. So he's like, "Oh man, like, the time I'm in the UK, like, I'm not get to do the interview." But I was like, I wanted him to ask a question. Right? I was like, I wanted mm. him to feel like part of the episode. So I got um, <coughs> Kaya to send in a question to you, and I'm going to play that now, inshallah, like, if it loads. Spoken in as well. Yeah. So here we go. This is here we go. This is a question from Kaya, from our co-host, all the way from the UK. And this is for you, and then you can answer it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Arnaut. It's a shame I couldn't meet you this time, but inshallah, I'll catch you when you're next in Dubai. Inshallah. I've got one question for you, real quick. If there was one thing you could change about football, not necessarily the game itself, but football as a whole, the industry as a whole, what would it be? That's a good question. Good question. Yeah. He said he was thinking for a long time, he's asking his boys that question. I had a question, man. Yeah. <sighs> So he's asking is that if there would be one thing that I could change, not necessarily about the football game, but about the football industry, what would that be? Or the game, if, it was, if, it, if you think that's relevant. That is a good question, man. Um, what would that be? I think the one, I think the biggest thing, obviously, and it's a bit relevant to what's going on now in football, I think, um, I think what's really big and I'm, me personally I'm happy that uh, the leagues are working against it and everything that's happening now um, towards it I think football's become so big nowadays obviously that there's a lot of things involved that shouldn't be involved so especially like the racism and stuff um, which I think a lot of people underestimate how big of an effect it can really have on, on, on uh, football players in general I think it depends as well on, on how you build against it. I'm not really affected by stuff like that. Um, but I know, obviously, out of experience, that there will be a lot of players that will be heavily affected by stuff like that. And not even the professional players, what about the youth that's coming up? That's what I'm worried about as well. You've got a lot of kids, uh, you name it, 11 year old, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20. Um, they can generally 
get a lot of abuse racially um, for the wrong uh, reasons uh, re religiously um, you name it there's a lot of abuse that, 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 that a lot of football players get which is not fair upon them uh, if there's anything that I could take away in football at this time they will be that man um, basically let the players play yeah, do their man, thing so, take the, out all of yeah, the a negative of, sides there's a lot of things that come on the side of it and the reason why I say that is uh, to protect others to be fair because as I said earlier I, it doesn't really bother me um, because I grew up with it obviously and then in football it, it gets to a point where the bigger you get uh, the more likely you have to go through it obviously because it comes with the sport so you have to be be, be up for it you have to be um, tough to be able to uh, go through it um, but I know that there are a lot of kids that find it very difficult to deal with it that's why in my I didn't really want to say but he called me out now like I always try to there are a lot of um, young players that I try to speak to on the phone they call me sometimes and I try to give them a bit of feedback advice etc try to help them out um, and just always to try and be as open as possible, man. Anyone that's got any difficulties going through, um, any hardships, etc., that they've got someone um, who's been through it. Uh, and I haven't been through it all, to be fair. But I've got a small, tiny experience, and and, and that tiny bit of experience I can give to someone that that needs it, and he can add it to his baggage, for him to be able to develop himself and and get bigger as well. Always try and try and help that. Do you think football could benefit from like a mentoring kind of program where clubs allow the young up and coming, like the under twenty ones, under sixteens, to 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 have more open conversations with the um, first team? To be fair, I think I think I think that's oh, not with the first team. I thought you were yeah, because like the first team are, are the first team are where essentially those younger players are going to end up, and there's a lot of things that come with that. Managing, um, yeah, like just it, wealth. It just, it just depends on where you are. To be fair, there are a lot of clubs. To be fair, that do that properly, man. There are a lot of clubs. I mean, even the league itself, man. For example, I know in the, with the Premier League, uh, when I played at Bournemouth, we would have um, we would have uh, someone from the league uh, come to the club and speak about uh, gambling, uh, about his gambling addiction. I'm saying his gambling addiction because it, 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 he used to be, be a footballer himself, so he's an ex-football player. So whenever it comes from an ex-football player, it just it hits a bit differently, doesn't it? So I think that stuff like that, stuff like that is really good, man. Really help. Uh, really, it really can help a lot of uh, players out, especially because obviously there's a contrary to how beautiful football is as well, and there's a lot that you uh, have to be tough against and have to be firm on as well to be able to succeed. How do you know who to trust? Because I I had a conversation with a another footballer. <coughs> I won't say who, but he kind of had been done dirty in uh, when he became a footballer all of a sudden he got a, a, like a, a lifestyle change essentially like a lot yeah. more wealth etc and he was kind of <coughs> give, he was given finance advisors or financial advisors amongst other things and it kind of turned out that what they were advising him wasn't in his best interest it was kind of like things were being moved around kind of because he, they knew the money he had and how much and he kind of put his trust in them because they was like financial advisors I don't know if you've necessarily been burnt like that, but how do you know who to trust in that world? Uh, the same as... I have to return that question up on you. How do you know how to trust someone? You keep your circle really tight, I would say. Same in football, man. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same everywhere, man. How do you know who to trust? I mean, it's, 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 there, it's nothing different than, than what you do. Uh, you just pick and choose your people, isn't it? Um, in my specific situation in my particular life um, as I mentioned I think previously on the, the on the last podcast podcast that we did as well alhamdulillah man alhamdulillah rabbil alameen I've been really grateful for the people around me man I've got uh, still with the same friends that I've been with from young uh, my family has have always been supportive uh, towards me my mom and my uh, father's been, they've been my biggest heroes my mom and my father have done everything for me my friends always support me even up to this day um so how do you know to trust man it's difficult man i think you should i think um i think you should get i think you should give everyone the benefit of the doubt until you see differently that's what i generally think though um although it might be tough sometimes because there will be people that come to you for the wrong reasons but i generally believe that you should give people the, the benefit of the doubt uh, and then 
obviously if you see if you see something else then then you should <laughs> do, do you listen to the to the noise like there's like you know you could get caught up in like searching your name on twitter and see what everyone's saying about you and google and the news and people take interviews out of um context and so on and so forth do you uh, block that out or do you see it like how do, how does that work how do you mentally stay focused when there's a lot of noise around your name all the time especially around games and now champ champions league semi-finals the noise gets louder uh first of all for me is the dean uh without allah i wouldn't have anything and uh, everything i own is through him only uh so first and foremost that's it second of all um <laughs> it can get annoying at times right um <coughs> i did the other day that i said something and it's been taken out of context and then it gets big in the headlines and stuff so <coughs> There's a good lesson for me because the bigger you get in football, the bigger your profile gets. The Do you feel like you have to watch? Sorry, sorry, yeah, you feel like watch every, you have to watch every word that you say um, in the media. That depends as well. That depends on how uh, you want to portray yourself, I guess. I mean, me, I always, I'm a huge fan of just being open and honest about a lot of stuff, and sometimes I can backfire because obviously sometimes you keep 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 uh, a lot of the stuff private, but. I try to be myself throughout my enti entire career. I don't hide who I am. I don't uh, despise who I am. I don't 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 try to be different. Nothing like that. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm I'm happy. I'm grateful for who I am. I'm I'm I'm, I'm especially proud of what I've achieved, beat Nila so far. Um, and I'm just a normal guy, man. So I mean, I can't, I can't really put it into different words, man. I just try to be myself throughout my career. I don't want to change. I don't want to be someone else. Um, and I just. Uh, try and give my best version of who I am to everyone in the industry, um, with football, with my life, with friends, family, uh, fans, everyone. Um, and sometimes it can be difficult, obviously, because it can get to certain stages where you like have to obviously play the game a bit. Uh, you can't say everything that you want to say. Um, but generally speaking, I always try to be as open and honest as possible. Uh, but yeah, the bigger the pr the bigger your profile get that was a big lesson for me the bigger your profile get the bigger your career gets obviously the more attention is on you so therefore you obviously you've got a more you've got you've got a bigger responsibility in everything that you say Pe there are more people aiming to take it out of context or um make a headline out of it or make a story of it which is fair enough to be fair because the bigger your profile gets the more the more eyes you'll get that's normal um so me myself i should just be more aware of that to be fair hey just wanted to take a quick second to interrupt and let you guys know about what we call Freshly Grounded's Inner Circle. Every week we release an extra episode of Freshly Grounded called The Inner Circle, Freshly Grounded's Inner Circle, uh, which you can access by going to freshlygrounded.com forward slash Inner Circle. It's an ex extra episode of the podcast every single week where we just have a natter with the boys in the podcast, our producers, regular guests, uh, or regulars of Freshly Grounded. And um, we just have a great time and it's a lot more relaxed. Uh, and if you like that kind of vibe where you just want to kind of listen to something while you're driving and just feel relaxed and feel like the third person in the room, uh, that's the kind of vibe that we go for. We order food, we talk about world matters, we talk about silly stuff, we talk about serious stuff. Uh, and it's really, really fun. And most of all, it allows you guys to sp support the podcast. Uh, for just £5 a month, you can become a member of the Inner Circle. It's super, super fun. You'll love it. Freshlygrounded.com forward slash Inner Circle. All right, let's get back to the episode. Okay, so that was like a big thing that happened last season was that Villarreal probably were some underdogs going into... Not the underdogs for sure. Like, there's some true underdogs mm. in the Champions League. So I wouldn't say Villarreal were like complete underdogs, but then when you look at like some other teams, they tend to be the favorites. I think that people didn't expect Villarreal to come through with like the fire that they came through with. And um, how was that? Because then we, we saw like they, when Villarreal, I think like, be, I think once they won the quarterfinals, maybe they put out a tweet on their official Twitter, like saying like, um, uh, like oh, apparently you were just farmers league or something like that. They were like kind of mocking <laughs> it like that? in a good way, right? <laughs> like that that they beat expectation. So uh, going from that expectation to making it to the semi-finals, and let's be honest, if you were playing in that second leg, maybe making it to the final and winning. But <laughs> that's just my humble opinion. Um, 
how was that journey? Like, <coughs> what was it like, like going through that? And then you, again, with Champions League, you got a lot more eyes on you, bro. Like, and that's when I started seeing or hearing a lot more people have your name, like just said, oh, okay, which for me felt odd, bro. Because like, you're hearing it, you're like, wow, it's amazing. Because you're now in conversations um, from, pe from people who people respect, but then about you in the same uh, line of conversation as people respect, which you kind of spoke about earlier. How was that Champions League journey for you? You played Champions League before, of course, already. Yeah, I played like, Champions League before, uh, Club Brugge. Um, but I think we, yeah, we didn't get through the group stage. Um, but yeah, Alhamdulillah, man, the Champions League was, is always different, isn't it? Uh, that was one of the reasons why I really wanted to move to Villarreal as well. Apart from the league, um, and obviously the club itself, they won the, Euro the Europa League uh, the season prior to. Yeah. So that was just everything was just set in place for me. Uh, you know, Emery has been a fantastic coach to me, man. Really, um, it's really helped me a lot. I'm still learning so much from him. And everything just seemed to be the right step for me. And Alhamdulillah, it worked out. Especially the Champions League. It's, it's, it's a different league, man. Like just whenever any Champions League game, it's just different. I can't explain it. So I was, I, I was just really happy playing Champions League again, obviously with how determined and how eager I am just to succeed and perform. And um, showing myself, proving myself over and over again, what stage better than the Champions League, isn't it? Uh, the higher the platform, the better. So Champions League has been amazing so far for me to be able to be the, the all-time Villarreal top scorer in Champions League after one season. Um, I think that chose me that I've done something right this season and uh, really grateful for the run that I've had with, 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 with the entire team and the club, man. So you said earlier on the podcast uh, that you, in, in that semi-final with Liverpool, the first leg uh, you played, the second leg you didn't, and you were injured in the second leg and you kind of mentioned that you were injured or somewhat injured in the first leg, but you played anyway. How do you decide what's better because I imagine you're in this conundrum where you think well this is one of the biggest matches of my career so far um, so in some ways let me just firm it get out there and play the match and then you I imagine that you in another mindset you're saying well if I just miss this match I could have a longer run this season mm. or like I could essentially have a longer career how do you in that such a in such a big stage make that decision uh, it's really difficult because everything is uh, based on uh, based on opinions uh, but the champions league was tough man and you can imagine like semi finals against liverpool for me to not play the game uh, that's like that's nothing worse for me right there's nothing worse for me so i actually i couldn't play that game um, I, I was i was playing with uh, a tiny calf strain um, after the game against Bayern Munich uh, in the Champions League. And then obviously uh, you do everything you can to recover from it, keep training, you, you do your massages, you do everything you can uh, day in, day out to be able to, to play the games and get through them, right? Uh, especially with the Champions League and how big it is for the club and for the team and for the teammates and for the manager, for me, myself, friends, family, everything that's involved, right? You just want to be able to play. So an injury never comes on the right time, does it? But specifically speaking, this time with the Champions League, um, played against uh, Liverpool away at Enfield. Uh, I tried to get through the game, play with um, the tiny calves way and it affected my in corner in, in, in a bad way. Um, and then from then, obviously, after that game, it got a bit worse. Uh, we played the... No, we didn't play then. Then, was there a game in between? I'm not sure. I don't think there was a game in between. Then we prepared ourselves for the next game and I was literally went through training. You do everything you can, everything you can, everything you can. And then just, I think it was one, no, 100% sure it was one game, uh, one training before the game. I just like, uh, I think obviously everyone saw, uh, saw it as well and the manager as well. I just walked up to the manager and just looked at him. I said, get fam. Like, tried everything. And he kind of looked at me and he, he's like, yeah, I know you've done everything you can, man. It's all right, man. And, we're going to do everything to try and win the game, prepare yourself for the final, etc. Um, that was tough for me making that decision. Um, and it wasn't really a decision to be fair because for me, I always continue until I can't. 
to, if that makes any sense. Because you might think that uh, you make a decision based on um, based on uh, reasoning in 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 that sense. Like you think, oh, maybe if I if I if, if I give myself another two weeks now. Uh, I'll be able to play the, the 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 last four weeks, or be able to prepare myself for this game. <coughs> but for me, I, I I don't really work like that in football. For me, I want to play as much games as possible, whenever, however. If I can, I'm playing. If I can, I'm playing always, always. That's not really an excuse for me, and that's just the way I am, and that's just the way that I approach my games. Um, but it takes a bit of a mentality as well to be like that. Uh, there there will be other players that that um, will play their games differently and and approach their games differently as well. But for me. If I can play, I'm playing, man. If that's with one leg or one arm or one ear, one eye, I'm playing, man. 100%, man. Inshallah. Inshallah. May Allah, <coughs> May Allah put, put barak in it for you, man. I think, like, both of us, we've got the AC <laughs> one in, so, like, it's, like, hitting our throats, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's talk a bit international. I know this uh, podcast has been really, like, football heavy. I think, like, some people will be like, oh, man, like, you had Dadji one. Because I think a lot of our listeners love you as, like, you right like your personality and they love hearing from you about you and i think like last couple podcasts that we've done we've spoken about your story and and stuff like that and i think mm -hmm. this time there's there's been such big changes in the football world for you and like we said the champions league and the international games which we haven't yeah. even spoken about yet that i wanted to have an episode where we did speak about those changes um so for anyone listening who's like oh man like i wanted to just say <laughs> some normal chit chat i do apologize but inshallah we'll have uh dan Juan back on like in the future to to have more of that Inshallah. but it's the, the year like there's the uh, the world cups happening at the end of the year so i think there's so much to speak about so um all right last topic to speak about before i want to do a quick fire round with you and Go on. Uh, so this is the last topic and i want to talk about the international world so we'll start off first of all with um a kind of sad element uh which is obviously i think like it took everyone by kind of surprise recently a few months ago when we heard the news about the the dutch coach and obviously uh van Gaal, he kind of he, he's become ill i'm not sure what uh, cancer he has uh but he became ill with cancer uh how is that as a someone who plays under him someone who's got a personal relationship with him uh someone who uh, like is always being like, kind of trained and coached and I suppose like Pete you often hear that players see their managers as, as somewhat of like a father figure and stuff like that especially when they're like older than them how was that for you guys and for you specifically hearing that news and and and, and what's it like now um I think like subhanAllah I think uh with how disastrous it's been um for him and for his family and for us as well um, I think what's great about Louis van Gaal, obviously, is he's such a good mental uh, man -to -man coach as well. So even if you look to uh, the recent games that the, uh, the uh, that the Netherlands played and 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 going up to the World Cup, it's actually brought more um, purpose for the entire team. Wow! Um, and that's actually the truth, man. It's like uh, the, when when the news broke to every one of us. Um, it brought a bigger togetherness it brought more bonding and I genuinely believe that um, we've got a big chance at uh, the World Cup as well we've got a very good team we've got a very good coach um, we've got a lovely group everyone is good with, the, with each other which is very important um, we've got a lot of chemistry um, and I think that with the way that Louis is and what has befallen upon him the way that he expresses himself now, even though he's been diagnosed with cancer, obviously, it's nothing but praiseworthy, man. And I think he inspires every one of us, and that's including me, massively, man. The way that he holds himself, the way that he uh, he's on it, like he's he, he's built off a different breed, though. Like he is, uh, he's a he's a very good manager for us, man. We've seen you a lot more on the international stage in the past few months. Uh, how do you start preparing mentally, physically uh, for hopefully a prosperous winter now, a, a winter that's different to any other winter in football because obviously the World Cup taking uh, place in Qatar. What's your mindset now? How much of your mindset is on like club football? How much <coughs> is on casual football? How do you compartmentalize that? Uh, w what is it like as a as a professional athlete now going into what's going to be the most interesting winter in probably football history? <laughs> For me, honestly, I'm not focused on it at all. Um, and the reason for it is 
is because the means for being able to perform on the World Cup and being able to prepare myself in the best way possible for the World Cup is at my club. Right. So knowing that that's the means, that's where my focus is. So as long as I, I'm in good shape, inshallah, uh, perform at my club, um, the World Cup will, will handle itself, I think, inshallah. if that makes any sense, inshallah. So um, for me, that's just what I do. When I, I take, um, I don't really look forward too much in the future. Um, and that's because I kind of know my personality as well. They'll make me very, um, what's the word? I'm very determined. So if I look too far to the future, like I, I want to win the World Cup today. Right. You understand why? You're I mean? very quick. Yeah, 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 I just yeah. want to win it today. I know how quick you are because of <laughs> when I see you play, bro, like oh, when, you, when, when you see Dan Juma in person and on his podcast, you can see, I'm sure Cairo, you've met him for the first time today. You can see kind of the softness, the friendliness, like he laughs at everything. And then, bro, you see him play on the pitch and it's like two different people. You see the aggression, you see like, and you can see how much things, how emotional of a sport is for you. Like, uh, bro, <laughs> like if the guy, if you, I remember bro, like, I, can't, bro, I was, th- oh, there's this game that we're watching and I, I can't remember what game it is. And I was texting Ibrahim and, or I was texting Bilal at the same time. Me and Bilal were texting. We were like watching it and texting each other at the same time. Bilal, for those who don't know, he's like, you're one of your best friends from, uh, from Holland. And what happened, bro? I don't know if you remember what game this is. Uh, uh, you ended up getting injured because you got fouled. Um, it was like early on yeah, in the season. Yeah, yeah, no, it Maybe wasn't injured, but I got, I got such a big hit. Uh, you kick. got kicked, yeah. Yeah, and then I went off the pitch, but I played the next game. Yeah. So I, I, I wasn't injured, but I was against, um, don't say it. I can't say it because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a home game though. I, I, yeah. I know which game you're talking so about. So you got kicked and... God, I got a bad kick on my, on, on my knee then, bang. Yeah, and, and, with the, the, and then you tried playing on and then in true Dan Juma fashion and then it just looked like you were in a lot of pain. And I texted Bilal and I said, bro, what's going on, man? And Bilal was like, this is out of character because he doesn't, oh, he doesn't exaggerate. So he said it's out of character that he's, if he's in this much pain, it looks serious. <laughs> and so we were worried, bro. That guy, man, you need to stop speaking to him. Because, because bro, the, <laughs> ki- the kick- That's what I mean, he just spills all the tea about me. On camera, because oh, on camera- like, what are you doing, man? On camera, it didn't look that bad of a kick. But, and that's what Bilal was saying. Bilal was like, oh, but from his reaction, you could tell it's serious. And that's when we were both worried then. <laughs> like, what is happening? Because there's a certain man might drop a bit easy, but that's not, that's not you. <laughs> so that's what we were a bit worried. And then um, what you saw in that game is your anger that you had to got in, that you were hurt. Like you were angry that you had to come off. You were angry that you weren't allowed, to, like you weren't able to carry on playing. And that's not the the danger you see on the pitch. And and, and it's a good, it's a good aggression. It's like a competitive aggression, um, but they're two different. Almost like you, you can see that professional side coming in. Like I just want to play. I want to do what's best for my team. Mm. I want to at the end they get balls in the back of the net. That's my job. And anything other than that on the pitch, you just it makes you angry, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, it means it comes from a good place, and sometimes obviously it turns into frustration, especially um, if you know that you can be important for the team. Um, and just I can't explain it, man. I'm just such a passionate guy with 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 with, with my career. Um, there's every game I miss. It's just, bro. It's like I just hate it. Man. Yeah, I you can see that. You can see that. Like, don't know what can I say, man. What can I say, man? I think if you strip, uh, if you strip football away from me, that's the worst that you can do as well, man. Like I just, uh, just hated it, man. I, I can remember that game as well. I went to the change room, started to cry, some tears. Really? Fall. Yeah, but they don't show it on TV, is it? Yeah, they don't show the. I tried to hide them on the pitch, but as soon as I go into the change room, ah! really? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm an, I'm an emotional guy. We need to get, a, we need to get a, a Dan Juma all or nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see, it's like a football documentary they do on like Amazon do it on like some of the clubs okay. but they show like everything, yeah, bro, everything. like the behind the scenes and stuff we need to see one of those in Villarreal yeah, uh, alright bro um, let's take a quick pause and then we're going to start we're going to do a quick fire um, round to exit to, 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 to finish off the interview and then inshallah we're going to go play some golf
Inshallah, man. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back. Yeah, all right, first of all, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, our energy has changed now. How was um, <laughs> how was skydive, uh, skydiving? How was snow diving? What is it called? Snow diving. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> snow diving. <laughs> how was deep sea diving? Is that what it was called? Deep sea diving. Isn't that what you did? My man said deep sea diving. I think that's what it is called. Scuba diving. No? Scuba How was scuba <laughs> diving? <laughs> How was scuba diving? Deep sea. Uh, that was sick, man. Yeah? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I've never done it before. At first, I was a bit scared, to be fair, man, because um, if you go to the Maldives, they've got sharks and stuff, right? And I've never done it before. Now, in my head, sharks are the most dangerous animals on, the, on, on, on Earth. Like, you come near them, they'll attack you, like, right? In my head, that's what it's like, right? Apparently, Obviously, like to me, it's new, so I, I'm gonna look dumb now. But uh, but apparently, sharks they're like super friendly. They're just certain sharks, but they live in Australia and and and, and in different seas. They are really dangerous. So I start to do scuba diving at Maldives, and there's like loads of sharks around. No. Me. Yeah. So in my head, I'm like, no, no, not in a cage, just freely in the sea. No, was you in a cage? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 it's just in the sea. Damn. <laughs> you think you're dangerous in a cage, bro? <laughs> <laughs> but in my head, I'm like, hey, loads of sharks. And then, boy, you start swimming with them, nothing. Really? Uh, yeah, they don't do anything. They're, bro, they're so friendly. They just swim past you, don't do anything. They don't, they don't care about you at all. So, it's, alhamdulillah, it was a good experience, man. Apparently, if you just punch, if you, all you have to do is punch a shark punch in the nose. nose or something, yeah. But are you going to punch them if they, they come yeah. like this, man? You're not going to punch I, them. I thought it's when they like smell blood or. Or like kind of consent, that's true though or? I heard if, if like if you bleed you need to be careful because then they'll come for you or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what well, I mean I've never been around sharks I'm not sure though. I'm not a shark expert but <laughs> <laughs> I think it's similar uh, with um, spiders like spiders have bad PR man they've got bad rep like they uh, they're really friendly apparently <laughs> like spiders just look true. scary don't they that is yeah. true that is true I mean that I've is, never heard anyone true. get bitten that's true. by a spider have you noticed in Dubai there's a lot of like lizards you know what, I've not, but I know in your side, there is. Yeah. But I'm not sure why. Because I see it a lot on your walls when I'm waiting outside. Really? Yeah. In the out- geckos, yeah. they're calling geckos, right? Yeah, they're outside on the walls a lot, outside. Lot. Yeah. Mm, like, you do see them, yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few. It's a bit, okay, they look scary, bro. But they're tiny, no? I know, but it's just because you don't <laughs> see them in the UK. <laughs> it's like, it's like foreign. It's yeah, foreign. like in the UK, you see moths. What? Are you scared of like insects and spiders? I'm not scared of uh, insects and spiders, no. But I feel icky around like them lizards a bit. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the, were you here with me when there was one it's in my yard? Tiny, I'm fine, man. When it was in your house? No. Yeah. Okay, I had to finish it off. Okay. <laughs> Is it? What, a lizard? <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, let's move on, let's move on, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, scuba driving is cool, yeah? Uh, that's good. <laughs> um, and then you did fishing? <laughs> How was fishing? Did you eat the fish that you fo- that, did you eat the fish that you fished? Yeah, I did, man. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. And yeah, then I you did. have to get all the scales out and stuff like that. Was he getting? Uh, no, obviously that there's a uh, there's a chef who prepared it for me. Of course. Uh, but the fishing experience it's uh, <laughs> experience. How dare I? Uh, bro, how am I? Uh, I don't know what what to do. Is it? I just catch the fish and I eat it. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, that was a good experience, man. Alhamdulillah. There's a, the Rock recently put an Instagram post out saying that uh, of him of him catching fish. He has a private fish that he catches. The private rock. fish. You're basically like the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> private fish. He has like a private in his own compound. He fishes. Okay, okay, okay. What? His fish. Yeah, he wrote an Instagram caption about it or something. Not really uh, that. It's levels, man. But I just go out in, into the sea, man. I catch a fish, <laughs> and I'm off, man. That's sick, is man. There, is there a lot of like stuff to do? As like, is it like halal food and things like that? Apart from the fishing yourself. Uh, in the Maldives, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. They are hundred percent Muslim as well. Hundred percent Muslim country. Everything's halal. Really? It's a Muslim uh, country. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I, I, I to know be that. fair, I thought that they obviously accommodated um, for Muslim people as well, but it's hundred percent Muslim, man. What was the breakfast like? Unbelievable breakfast. Really? Yeah, lunch, dinner, everything was like unbelievable. Bro. Alhamdulillah. I really recommend going there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I'm a footballer, I'll definitely try it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Hanan went. Uh, no way. Yeah, yeah. Before he came in. Uh, he went like a few months ago, yeah. He loved you, it. He's the you know one who recommended go, it. You know when you see it, though, yeah? Like, you've, you'd think that it, the villas cost like, you know, two grand a night in the middle, like in the hut in the middle of the sea. Hmm. But then I was researching the other day. They don't, it, it, that's just if you want to get the hut. 
you can, uh, yeah, yeah, you can get room, yeah, you can get oh, room. Yeah, yeah. 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 But then you, you, don't, you don't have to go. go. You can make it as expensive as you want to make it. Like yeah. you don't have to yeah, go yeah. out. Do you? But what's what's it like when you get there? That well, you're living in Dubai, man. All these will be fine for you, man. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Living in Dubai, here. complaining about. We know who your clients are. Exactly. He's playing it. He's playing it. He's playing it quiet. Yeah, Yeah, man. Okay, so. What well, 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 were we you, talking about earlier? Had, yeah? did, did you fish? You had LA? you fished before? What was it? LA, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? what you, uh, New, New York? York? New York? New York? Yeah, I'm. Uh, You're the only one here that's been uh, there. <laughs> you ever been in New York? No. Never, never. Let's talk about New York now. How's New York, brother? Yeah, alhamdulillah. It's been yeah. ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the Moody. You're yeah. the only one that went Moody. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, uh, so had you fished before? Uh, yeah, I've, when I was younger. Like, uh, you know what's funny? I always used to go fish with my brother, right? When I was young, but when I say young, I used to be like eight years, eight, nine, ten. But I never actually went fishing. My brother would just throw my rod, my rod out, and I'll just play my game, game. Uh, what's game it boy. called, Game Boy? So I never had the patience to go for fishing. So I actually wanted to go fishing, and it's actually enjoyable, man. It's enjoyable. But I need to be honest. I don't have the heart for it, I think, man. Really? Yeah, really? man, because when you catch the fish, you, know, I mean, you feel a bit sad. Yeah, I feel a bit sad, man. Mm. But then again, to be fair, it's it's, it's a good experience because. I eat loads of fish, right? But then you just buy it at the supermarket. But it's actually good to just know where it comes from. It's just, so I mean like, same with meat, fish, everything. Like so that fish in your Instagram pro in picture, you caught that? That's here, man. <laughs> is it? Yeah, man. But you caught that? Yeah. Come on, Come on you man. didn't catch that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. I've got well, first time fishing since childhood. Like, you caught that? <laughs> what was that, like sea bass? What was that, big one? That was a big well, tuna or something. Bro. Proof as well. <laughs> your video? Yeah, man. That was a big one as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That That's why in my head, you see, uh, where, I think where after that one, I caught, a ki- uh, I caught a tiny one. But when I caught the, the big one, I was like, raw, is this how big fishes are? Where really? can I see the size of this fish? Um, oh, so this video, think. man. No, yo, show Carl. Massive. Is this your one? Is this one? Yeah? Damn, your foot. Bir- what? <laughs> That's mad, isn't it? What kind of fish is that? That uh, looks like one of them. Um, Gupra. Gupra. Can you eat? Can 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 all fish are all fish edible? I have no idea. I know there's one fish that's like if you eat it, it's poison, like piranha or something. Is it? it? I think. I thought they eat people. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) You know what's mad, bro? How a snake can eat such large objects, but it's so small, but then just. No, that's hard. Mad, isn't it? It's amazing. But the skin stretches, right? But no, they. I thought they. They I shed heard, skin, yeah, they, I think. No, I heard they size you for a while before they go and eat you. Oh, is it? Yeah, like I heard they size you to get their self ready, and then they will start eating you. Yeah. Like oh. I, I, I've heard, yeah, that they, they. So let's say, for example, they catch a mouse, yeah? Mm. They won't eat the mouse right away. They'll, they size and their body's getting ready to digest it, and then they slowly swallow it. Wow, that's interesting, man. That's amazing. But don't quote me on that. But I'm sure well, David Attenborough did say that. Snake, uh, snake uh, expert, Cairo. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, uh, it's been a lovely podcast and uh, we're going to end it, inshallah, now with 12 quick fire questions for Iron Out Dan Juma. They don't have to be quick, bro. You can, you can take your time answering them, to be honest. Uh, I just needed to call the, <laughs> I need to call the segment something, to be honest. All right, here we go. It doesn't have to be quick, okay? Bismillah. Favorite restaurant? <laughs> I wouldn't be able to answer that quick anyway. Favorite restaurant um, or cuisine? If you if you find restaurant hard, you cuisine. Take cuisine. You know the thing is, I actually I'm not a huge fan of restaurant. I like to go to a restaurant every now and then, but I just think that's not, nothing's the same as homemade food, man. I just enjoy eating at home more than in a restaurant, so that's why I have to go for cuisine. Cuisine I really like is Moroccan food, man. Nice. Yeah, 100%. Nice. Man. Tajin? Tajin, Harira. Nice. Shorba. Yeah, man. You got some Moroccan friends, innit? Yeah. yeah so I grew up with it. From childhood, yeah. Okay, <laughs> favorite surah of the Quran or ayah? <coughs> um, surah or ayah? There's one um, that blew my mind away recently, which is. Second verse of Surah Al-Muluk. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا um, Which Allah basically says, Allah created uh, death and life. 
pride, um, a la maut. Um, it's actually the lecture that I went to, uh, Sheikh Abdul Ahad, he explained it, right? And he says, the ulema say that, uh, um, why does Allah mention death before life, right? Because you first live and then you die. But that's because death actually represents our time on the dunya. And life represents our life in the akhirah. So you should always try to um, realize, in my words, do you live to die or do you die to live? That's why that particular ayah is like always blows our mind away, man. Yeah, that's powerful, man. That's very powerful. Yeah, it's de it definitely just almost like the stepping stone to the to the akhir, to the eternal life. Favorite hadith. Favorite hadith. Uh, oh, I can't choose one, man. Can okay, I? Okay, prominent hadith that pops into your mind when I say favorite hadith. At this particular time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there's one I'm not going to give the background story to it Because it's private But there's one I think I said it to you today as well um, The hadith of uh, the Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah That he says um, Exchange gifts among one, one another um, Because that will increase your bonding And there's something that happened recently I got gifted something Alhamdulillah by a Dear friend of mine um, and the hadith just sticks in my mind now because of the gift that he gave me I appreciate it that much I obviously tr uh, tried to gift him something back as soon as possible and from there uh, someone I met recently and I just feel uh, very close to that person yeah. and uh, alhamdulillah like you see what I mean it's just that certain person where you just click with straight away you always seem to have a good bond from the beginning and I genuinely feel that he's one of them so um, he actually mentioned a hadith to me um, Not mentioned But he wrote it on um, On a piece of paper With a gift and That's why that hadith Just pops yeah. into my mind now Because that's the most recent one Amazing man Okay Best shirt swap uh, There has to be um, There are loads man But If I like, Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously, it's, it's, it's a childhood dream because he's, he's always been a hero of mine. Um, Where did you swap that shirt? Back, back behind the, in the dressing room or like after the match? No, in the, the dressing room. Okay. In the dressing room, yeah, Old Trafford. And um, that's when I got a little chat with him as well. And he's, uh, he just looked at me and said, very good game, man. Keep going. And it's just stuff like that. You know, the small things yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that make a big impact. Uh, and obviously, nice. um, that's been a, a great... I mean that was that's the one yeah. that I would have chosen. So, well, it's a bit it's a bit obvious, isn't it? That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I mean? If that's anyone your name, is that one? That's yeah, why. If you didn't say that one, it's like <laughs> no, no, no I, I'm lying. Yeah. I'm lying. I'm lying. Yeah, Where's yeah, it? Where's the show? We got that answer. <laughs> <laughs> we got that answer. Yes. Again, uh, uh, repeat that. Uh, we can't. Uh, that, that wasn't even a swap. Like, that that. Was a swap. We're going to repeat that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Favorite shirt swap. Um, <laughs> I got this shirt swap. FG yeah. number 70. You know yeah. why it's number 17? Because that's when it's found. Uh, no way. Number 17. Found it, 17. Found no way. Okay. 2017. <laughs> wow. I got amazing. this one. To everyone that sees, I got this one at home. Did you, did you, this did is did my you, most you, precious <laughs> shirt without a doubt. Did you fly with that one? He's actually worn that actually, man. Very lovely. Yeah, yeah. Twenty-four-seven. No, that's not true. Twenty-four-seven. That's very kind. Bro, but you can't believe you brought that from from uh, Spain. Bro, they, you know what? <laughs> actually, since Dan was at it, they all sold out. So I think they sold out. All right, uh, favorite comfy as well, man. Favorite. Actually, you know, actually, like this. I'm not saying. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying. He thinks I'm saying this because it's here. But whenever I wear this shirt, people come up to me. Bro, can I have one as well? Bro, it's actually really nice. I, and he I never gives them to me um, because he <laughs> never has them because they're all sold out twenty four seven. No, because we never restocked it. Bro, but maybe it if people sense, want it, if people want it, we can restock it. You have yeah, to yeah, restock it because I, I, I've got twenty million people that want it minimum. But let me get one before them people do. Yeah, after you worry about it, we went. <laughs> <laughs> if we, if people want it, we can restock it. So let we'll find out in the comments. If people want it, we restock it. All right, favorite. Uh, I'm going to skip some of these. Uh, Favorite dessert? Favorite dessert, ice cream. Uh, favorite football role model? 
So let's say someone who's like legend status, Pele, oh. like. He has to be retired as well? Yeah. Yeah, but there are loads, man. Uh, one that comes <coughs> to mind. And I have to give the reason for it as well? You can, of course. One that's retired now, Zinedine Zidane. Okay. What that's a, a that's legend. a good one, man. That's a good one. What a legend. Why, why is it that? Because well, when I was young, I looked, yeah, he watched his game. Um, and why I respect him as well, it's like the footballing is, playing football is one thing, right? And being good and playing football is one thing. But after his career, he went on to be a coach and he won the Champions League as a coach thrice, back to back. He must have got such an understanding of football that's unmatched. Yeah, it's true. To be able to play Is he managing one right now? Uh, no. But I thought he got famous for the headbutt at the World Cup. So he must be like a big player. Yeah, Zidane no, man, was huge, bro. Yeah, no way. Bro, he's a baller, man. What yeah. a player. <laughs> so that's, a good, that's a very good answer. Yeah. Right, final answer question. What do you look forward to in Jannah? Mm. What do I look forward to in Jannah, man? What do I look forward to in Jannah? You know, I find that such a difficult answer, uh, such a difficult question to answer because I feel like mentioning anything or like bill it all the rest. So I mean, bro, it's like there's, there's, I'm not even thinking about, I'm not even thinking about uh, what I'm looking forward to most, bro. I just, inshallah, we all make it, man. Is yeah, that yeah, what I mean? sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll make it. I'll be, I tell myself, as long as I make it to Jannah, I'm happy to be on the streets. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's a, Oh, inshallah, yeah, inshallah, man. Inshallah. Make it, man. May Allah make us all people. Jannah, yeah, I mean, bro, thank you so much, man, for always giving us your time. Always, uh, like, like, man, you're giving uh, me your like, time as well. Nah, man. Thank you, you for your time. It's as well. been a pleasure, and uh, hopefully, we can have you on soon. We probably won't see you now on, on Fresh Guarded until maybe like, you know, after, because yeah. you've got very, very busy next like six, seven months in Charlotte and football. Um, really looking forward to seeing you. Uh, in the next kind of few months uh, at club football and very excited inshallah, inshallah. Uh, to see you on the world stage in Qatar inshallah may inshallah. Allah get you uh, make you successful and get you to the world I cup mean, healthy I mean. and um, yeah man I'm looking forward to seeing that man I mean, so uh, we'll man. see hopefully we can have another podcast like, a, like uh, maybe in a, in a year's time or something with a kind inshallah. of uh, catch up of how if the whole thing time went. for me left man bro Barak always Allah time for you thank you so much it. Take care, guys. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> no, Fresh no, 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 no. See you. We're not, we're not, we're not done yet. <coughs> Bismillah. Barakallah, Fik. Thank you for your time as well, brother. I uh, appreciate your time as well. See, he always does. He always says, he always, bro, this is what he always does. He says what he wants, then you can't say what he wants. So I'm going to take my time now. Okay. Barakallah, Fik, man. I appreciate your time as well because there's a fact. I know that you're fully booked. You're busy. Everyone wants to jump on the podcast. So I know. Yes, it's true. I know. I know how difficult it is to jump on this podcast. So it's a privilege for me to be on a fresh ground. And the fact that you chose me, have chosen me before, and want to choose me again, inshallah, to be on the podcast. Barakallah, I appreciate your time as well. Your time is a lot more precious than my time. That's not true. May Allah bless you, bro. And, Thank um, you so much. I mean, man. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Thank you guys for watching. This is two, episode 280 of Freshly Grounded with Arnout Dan Juma. We'll see you again next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>